Hey, Josh Johnson here on location in Macon County. And I got a hard hat with the Alabama Forestry Commission. And uh, this episode of 12 Minutes With, we're going to spend 12 minutes with a controlled burn. And the people who execute those, you've seen a lot of smoke lately. A lot of people wondering why you're seeing that smoke. Here's why. So, uh, walk us through what you got, what you're doing here. Sure, this is the drip torch we talked about earlier. And uh, as I said, I have it in the stored method here. So we're gonna take it out and actually turn this wick up so that we can use it for the prescribed burn. In there, as you'll may be able to see, we have the fuel that we're gonna use, and that's gonna be a mix with uh, gasoline and diesel. We always mix those. The gasoline helps ignite the fire quickly, and the diesel helps prolong the life of that flame uh, so that it can get any of the fuel that is in our prescribed burned area. I'm gonna get this ready for prescribed burning, and we're ready to go. Anytime we do a control burn, we always want to make sure that we have really good fire breaks. And by a fire break, I mean down to dirt level, no fuel, such as pine straw, needles, leaves, or any debris in the way that would cause this fire to escape from where we want it to uh, be. Today on the prescribed burn, we have a southerly wind. So we want to make sure we get on the north side of the property and light our test fire. Uh, we're going to do a backing fire for right now to see kind of what the flame does. And right now we're gonna go in the stand here and do our test fire. I'm just gonna dribble a little bit of fuel on the ground from the drip torch and see exactly what it does. We wanna check our smoke, make sure it's going in the direction that is predicted and see how well it dissipates so that we don't affect anything downwind. As you see, I just lit a small spot here. Uh, we're gonna see what the wind does with this flame. We're gonna look at the smoke column and see how it rises. Very important when you're doing your prescribed burn is to always stop and look and see what the flames are doing. If we turn back and look right now, it looks like it may be gusting pretty quickly. The reason for that is, is to the right, we see where we have a funnel, a wind funnel coming in and causing that flame to kind of fan. Corners a lot of times are where you will have a jump or a spot over over on, on the other side of your fire break because right now we have two funnels. We have this long funnel and we have our fire break funnel and the wind coming together can sometimes cause that flame to jump over. So that's where it can go from being a controlled burn to a not so controlled It burn. can be, yes so sir. If it jumps over this, it gets into this over here. Correct. That's, un that's where the landowner does not want any of that burned over on this side. So we're trying to keep all of our flame over here. As you look here, you can see how the backfire isn't doing a whole lot, which is good. Uh, on this side, this particular side, we have a different fuel type. If you noticed up here where we did our test fire, we had a lot of sage grass uh, and a lot of other grasses. Here we have a lot of hardwood leaves. Because of the actual heavy dew we had last night, that's really good for our backfire. Uh, it will allow it to kind of back slowly and not get out of control. You can see this fire has kind of calmed down right now. The fire has gotten off of the break on the flank side and gotten away from that wind funnel and is actually doing what our test fire did. If you notice the test fire that we did, it was not uh, long flame links as when I lit that flank that's because we had the wind funnel uh, now that it's actually gotten into the stand and it's doing exactly what our test fire did the other thing I'm noticing is the the, the fire break is literally working perfectly oh yeah the, the fire you lit is expanding direction except into the fire break that's 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 what, what we exactly want what <laughs> that's see, exactly right? what we want yeah as you notice here the fire is stopping right on our fire break and that's exactly what we want. We put this fire break here to keep the fire contained and much like we do with a wildfire. When we show up on scene with a wildfire and this, the fire is burning through uh, a fuel, understory fuel, whatever it may be, we, we will put a fire break down just like this with our bulldozer to stop that fire. We don't actually put the fire out, we just contain it. We take the fuel away from the fire so that it can no longer burn closer to the corner of our uh, piece of property that we're burning. We want to make sure that when you drag this fire 
and put fire on the ground, you always want to, what we say, cap it off or round it off. Drag it up a little from your back fire so that again, just like the flank on the other side that we talked about, the back and the flank are pulling themselves together and there's less likely of a chance for it jumping the fire break. So you're kind of just essentially cornering it off from itself. Right, basically. So what will happen is this back fire here will pull to this flanking fire and they'll, they'll come together. And so instead the of it, back fire is over there. the back fire is here to our right and the yeah. flank fire is here in front of Anytime us. Anytime we do a control burn, we want to take several things into account. One being the opening of the canopy. If you look up, you can see a lot of blue sky coming through this canopy. That tells me that I can allow, there's going to be a lot of heat escaping through the top of these trees. It's not going to be held in by the canopy of the trees, <clears throat> which in turn means that I could possibly get these flame links a little bit longer and the flame a little bit hotter because that opening is, on, is going to allow the heat to escape rather than uh, do any damage to the trees. So I, I hear a drone overhead. Do you guys use drones? We do. We have a couple of drones in our arsenal. Uh, we can come out to a landowner's property, property and actually do an aerial photos of the landowner's property with our drone. It's real-time photos. If you go on Google Earth, uh, things like that, sometimes they could be a year or two behind. If you've just recently had your property thinned or clear cut, you may want an updated photo of that property. And for a fee, we can come out with our drone and take some aerial photos. Now what you said a minute ago was gonna happen has happened. The, the, you said these fires would meet right. and begin to burn in the, in the same direction. That's exactly what's happened. And also, Josh, we've had a little bit of wind change. Um, seems like the wind is kind of coming a little more out of the west. And that's what I told you would happen is uh, anytime you lay this fire on the ground, it's going to create its own weather. And we also still are standing here in a little bit of a funnel. But yeah, those, the flank and the back fire have met. And you notice right now, a, as they're meeting, they're increasing. The two flames are coming together and the, the size of the fire is getting bigger. But if you walk down here and take a look at our back fire, it's still just kind of creeping along. Um, looks like, as you can tell from the smoke, the, the wind has kind of changed. So in any, any event that that happens, we may be able, may have to take action to actually go in there and set another fire in the stand to manipulate the flames to do what we want it to do. So you can go in there and light a back fire, uh, maybe drag another strip flame fire to get that to calm down. In this case, for what the landowner wants, I think the fire is actually doing exactly what we need it to do. It's not uh, making long strides. We have a good wind that's actually blowing the heat out of the sand and up. So as long as the fire doesn't linger too long on the base of these pine trees, we should be fine. We're on the west side of the fire here and what we're doing is basically uh, any unburned fuel that when we rounded our corner and we closed it off, we want to make sure that we close that up so that all this fuel is burned and that if that fire does come this way that it will go out because it has no more fuel to burn. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drag our flank up just a little bit, go back and check and see what our flank on the east side is doing to see if we will be able to run any strip fire in here. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> that's why it's always important, uh, even though we do notify the local volunteer fire departments, anytime we do a control burn, we always try to contact the local volunteer fire departments and the local sheriff's office. As you can see, these two fires are still coming together. We have our flanking and our back fire coming together. Um, with the temperatures predicted to be up in the 80s today, it may not be safe to actually do any strips or any spot head fires. We want to make sure that those flame links are anywhere between uh, two and four feet in length. Uh, we don't want to get them any taller than that, and we definitely don't want to put any uh, scorch in these trees if we can't help it. And when I talk about scorch, if you look up in the tops of the trees and see the smoke rising, you can see the needles moving a little bit. Well, that's the heat rising off of this fire. 
And if we put too much heat on those needles, they'll discolor and turn a little bit of a yellow color. Uh, the rest of the tree will stay green. The bottom limbs will probably turn yellow. Doesn't uh, inherently hurt the tree, but anytime we can reduce that, it's always best. Take us through what we're doing now. Okay, so right now we're just walking uh, in, the burned, in the burned area. And anytime you're on a prescribed burn, the burned area is actually the safe spot. It, it won't reburn. So if, if anything does get out of hand, uh, you always wanna make sure as an agency, we do, we have a, what we call safety zone and escape routes. We have escape routes to get to those safety zones. But in the event that we can't get to the safety zone, the black or the burned fuel is always the best spot to be. So right now we're just gonna go in and check behind our flank fire and see exactly what it's doing. Um, as you can see, it's, it's doing great. It's uh, maybe three to four inch flame lengths, which is great. It's almost like a backing fire at this point. Um, and as you notice, as we walk, we're kind of walking uphill. We, we do want to be careful with the uh, fire on that because fire will run up a grade. So we want to make sure that it's not running up the grade. It looks like it's doing perfect. As you can see there, it's just backing. Um, what we had was just a small bit of wind change earlier when it was coming together. And uh, now what we need to do is get over back on the uh, west line and continue to drag our flank line down because we want to make sure that both the flanks stay the same uh, distance together so that one doesn't overtake the other side. So Do your eyes ever get used to the smoke? Uh, a little bit. I won't say they completely do because they do water every once in a while, but being in this uh, constantly doing prescribed burns, especially on wildfires, you have to kind of adapt to it so that you can see where you're going. Right. See this bud here on this sweet gum? It's just starting to break. And that's exactly what we want. We want to bring this fire through here and hopefully get this bud hot enough that it's gonna kill it. Because for the landowner's management objectives, this is an undesirable species. There's several different reasons why you would wanna do a prescribed burn. One that's most important to the AFC is fuel reduction to reduce the amount of catastrophic wildfires. The second would be for wildlife and insects and disease control.